Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this series, we're going to be talking about the wonderful world of serverless. So what is serverless? Uh, if you guys have been sort of following along with a lot of what's happening in the industry lately, you probably would have heard a bit about serverless or sort of listened out on the train and people were talking about serverless or some sort of hyped conference or so. I don't know if anyone actually talks on the train about serverless. But you know what I mean? It's one of those things that's extremely popular uh, and it's really growing at a rapid rate. So it's one of those things that I think would be really nice to sort of make a video, talk to you guys about, get some feelings from you guys and see what you guys think about it. Um, and also I really wanna show what the power of this is. I really strongly believe that it is the future in how we will build all applications uh, in the next five years and, and going onwards. I think this is a really, really nice model. So I think it re really works well. And I think at this point, my main goal is to get people excited about it because I find it really exciting. I find it really awesome. So what I wanna do is get you guys excited enough about this to learn more yourself, to go and build, to go and play. So first of all, that's, that's the goal for this series. I guess we should start off with a bit of a definition around this idea of serverless. So what I believe is a nice definition, and there's a guy called Simon Wardley who talks a bit about serverless online, and he gave a really nice definition of it, so I'm just gonna steal his, because I think it's actually really, really nice and it makes sense. So serverless is an event-driven, utility-based code execution environment, and it's also stateless, right? So this is, you know, there's a few different pieces in there and you can break those down into individual components and make whole videos talking about them. Um, but it is, you know, just thinking of it, you know, we talked about event driven, right? That was one thing. It, it is event driven, right? This idea is you create events and the events trigger Lambda or trigger something to do something else. So you just pay for the execution of that single runtime, right? That event. So that's another big piece of it, but we didn't sort of mention it in the definition because it's a little bit too tightly tied to uh, pay per execution models. But the thing is, you shouldn't be paying for things that you aren't using, right? It's like if, you know, you know this, this idea has been growing for so many years, right? When you rent something, when you used to rent videos or DVDs, you didn't pay for it when you weren't, um, you know, when you didn't have it. You just had it, you watched it, and you returned it, right? And you, that you paid for that aspect. It's, it's a similar concept, right? This idea is we shouldn't be paying for things we don't need or don't actually use, so why, why are we? And this is where a lot of companies, a lot of people, in my opinion, I believe will realize the fundamentals uh, of serverless and how much they can potentially save um, and how much they can alleviate from their teams as well as far as operations, costs, and you know, building and configuring things. It's sort of, it's one of those things that's just, it really relieves the management team and the company from a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting, right? That was a whole bunch of talking about things, but you get the idea, right? I mean, it's this event-driven, utility-based, serverless code execution environment, right? Stateless, that's stateless as well. So that's sort of what we're going to be talking about in this series, right? So that is, that is the main piece. What I wanna do in this series is I wanna talk about this serverless application model. That's the big piece that we're gonna be talking about here. Uh, and we can start off by having a look at that now, right? So in this first clip, we're just gonna be doing a bit of an introduction here about what we're gonna be using. And then in the next clips, we're gonna dive into uh, further about building this and testing it and doing local development and all that fun stuff. So what we're gonna be using is the serverless application model. Here it is, it's called AWS SAM. Uh, easy way of, of thinking about the serverless application model is SAM. If you haven't seen this before, it's on GitHub, so you can check it out um, and you can check out all the things that are happening, the issues, the feature requests, the pull requests, the wonderful world of open source software. Uh, and you can see all the information about it here and about how to create a serverless app creating, you know, using SAM. Now what this links through to here is the SAM local CLI. So this is the SAM CLI. It's an easy way to think of it, the SAM CLI. Uh, and it allows you to do development of serverless projects, and it also comes with a few bits and pieces that really help you get going, such as local development of your serverless applications. This is a really big piece, um, because you don't, you know, when we think about serverless, you know, we're probably going to have bits and pieces. We're gonna have, you know, maybe something in API Gateway, maybe something in Lambda, maybe something in DynamoDB, you know, all these things we don't have to manage, right? 
all these things that we just sort of pay for as they're you know on a per execution basis these things that are scalable individually scalable mind you so we have all these things um, but you know how do we test against that right should I, do I have to spin everything up in AWS and then test against that right no I should be able to do all of this locally and get a good understanding um, of my application locally so that's what we're going to be doing here uh, and we're going to be using the SAM CLI to facilitate that to build out this application locally so the SAM CLI has a whole bunch of uh, reading that you can get into here and there's a section around usage invoking functions locally you can even see this cool gif about how to do this but I want to go through it with you guys here and show you, you know, my perspective on this and how I would do it and, and go through that. So, um, but please do read all of this if you want to dig into it and, and I'm sure you will. So what I want to do is just jump into the terminal. So in this specific one, all I want to do is set up a project. In the next clip, we're going to be talking about uh, how we can sort of fiddle around with that, change it a little bit, do some testing locally and some of the pieces that are involved uh, in that. Um, it is important to have a look at the prerequisites for SAM CLI. Uh, you'll notice that Docker is required because we're going to be doing testing in containers locally. Uh, and that's a big piece of how we test things locally. Uh, and also Python. So jump on and grab Python 3.6 uh, or 3.7. Um, and you'll be good to go, right? It's really, really simple. Uh, you'll need Docker for Mac, of course, or Docker for Windows. Just grab the whatever's listed here in the prerequisites. So all I want to do right now is I want to go, let's create a brand new app. How would I create a new app? Say I have a million dollar idea. I open my terminal and I say SAM in it, right? So I've installed the SAM CLI. If we jump back here, you can see the SAM CLI was just pip install. Uh, and then the, in, in the user context, I want to install the AWS SAM CLI. So we've installed this and this gives us access to call SAM directly from the terminal. So Sam init is all I need to say. So I can do Sam init dash dash help, and that will show me all of the help options to initialize my serverless application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Sam init, and I'm going to say that the runtime I want to use is Node.js 8.1, because I want to use all the async await awesomeness. And the project that I want to give this, the name of this is going to be called my cool app. All I have to do is hit enter. And I have created the skeleton or the, the boilerplate or the template structure of my serverless project, my serverless application. So now that I have that, I can open it up in code and I can start editing it and I can use it as I, as I need. So we see the folder here, you see the hello world. It's just an example folder name that we can, uh, we can change. We have some tests that come with this, a basic, uh, a basic test that we can change and you know, suit to our application. We have our app.js, which will allow us to you know, act as a starting point for our app. Uh, and we have this thing called a template.yaml that we'll dive into as well uh, that's going to facilitate our structure of our application. This is the definition. We use a declarative format to define our application. This is all what SAM is all about, using a declarative model to define a serverless application. If you're familiar with CloudFormation, it is basically a very similar concept, but we'll talk a little bit about that in later episodes as well. So you also have a readme here that you can open and have a look at. It's just Markdown. Um, so if you have a Markdown editor or a viewer, you can just open that up and read through it. And this is everything that you get in just by creating, just by just doing a SAM in it. So you get everything ready to roll out of the box. So this is what we're going to be working with in this series. We've already done our SAM in it. So we have my cool app. So we'll continue working on this. And what I want to do is go through the pieces around creating this, creating a test, doing a local development, you know, working with an API in front of our Lambda function and how we can generate events. And we can talk about, you know, uh, how those events can be different and what we can do to manipulate those events. Then we want to do things like packaging. We want to deploy this and get it running. And then we're going to do some updates and we're going to talk about deployment methodologies. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up in this series. So stick around and hopefully you get a lot out of it. Hopefully it's going to be fun. I mean, well, it will be fun, but that's a relative term. So, I mean, hopefully you guys find it fun. Um, but yeah, in the next clip, we'll dive into building this out further. So stay tuned. Cheers, guys.